Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, you are welcome once again to Talking Here with Dr. Laz, your favorite health program on television, and you're watching Africa Independent Television, AIT. Uh, my name is Dr. Laz Eze. It's still October, the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and you may recall uh, that earlier in the month, we started with Nigeria at 60, uh, celebration where we talked with a number of Nigerians on the streets and they made their recommendations on what they wanted for the health sector. Then we also talked about uh, cancer and we had an expert and also wife of uh, KB State Governor who shared a lot of insight. Then we talked about nutrition, childhood malnutrition. You know, it's, it's been a very packed month and uh, how to save Nigerian children. And today I have very special guests uh, with me. There will be three of them. But we take two at a time, and the, the other will also join us uh, uh, in, in the course of the program. And what we'll be focusing on is on breast cancer. And these guests are survivors. They are telling the story, and it shows that cancer is not a death sentence. So I'll be introducing them uh, after the break. You know, but just before then, follow us on our social media handles. Uh, at Talk Health Niger. You can also follow me at Don Last for you on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, other communication channels. We'll be right back after the break and we get into the conversation much proper. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Talking Health with Dr. Lars, uh, your favorite health program on television. Uh, with me in the studio are uh, Gloria Oji. Gloria is the president of Network of People Impacted with Cancer in Nigeria, Nepisin. She's a cancer survivor of 10 years and still counting. And she's been a very strong advocate. She's also into the hospitality business, you know, so everything about her is not uh, cancer. You're welcome to the program, Gloria. Thank you for having me. Yes, also uh, with us is Ugona Okere. Ugona Okere is a librarian, uh, also a makeup artist, and a cancer survivor. Welcome, Ugona. Thank you, Doctor, for having me. She's also a member of NEPICIN, a network of persons impacted by cancer in Nigeria. Yes, uh, I know this is a very uh, familiar terrain uh, for both of you, having to always speak, but it's very, we can't complete this month without bringing cancer survivors. A lot of Nigerians think that cancer is a, a death sentence. So it's very important that we have more survivors who are telling their story. And I really thank both of you and all members of NEPICIN uh, who are speaking out, who are leading these advocates, because nobody can really tell this story better than yourself. So just in a very brief and concise way, uh, let me start with you, uh, Gloria, your cancer story. How did you identify it and uh, what was it like when you first uh, got diagnosed? Well, uh, in uh, 2010, in June, I... Uh, I was having my bath and I had, a, I felt a lump in my breast. And I was like, what was this? Mm. Okay, actually, it started in 2009. 
but um, December, and I went to hospital for that, and um, I did biopsy. And they took it for a test, and they discovered it was benign, that it wasn't cancerous, and I was happy. Mm. But uh, six months later, I felt another lump in the same place. Even though I didn't know it was a lump because I kept on believing that it may be the scar from the former mm -hmm. surgery I did at that particular place. So that when I felt it wasn't really getting smaller as I, as it ought to be, I had to call the doctor and the doctor asked me to come to the hospital, which I did. Another surgery was done and then mm. when the result came out, it was cancerous. So and you had, uh, two tests done on yes. the same lump? No, on different, the second, I, they did it on the first lump, then later, when the second lump came. On the same breast? On the same breast. Okay, so first so time they said it was benign, it was benign second yes. time, and now was found it was malignant. malignant. Yes. Okay, yes. so uh, when you saw, uh, got the news, <laughs> what, what was know, it like? It, it was like, um, my life stopped. Mm. You know, I just, I just couldn't think further. You, initially, you were having hopes, aspirations, mm -hmm. plans for the future. All of a sudden, you are told you have cancer. And I remember the first thing I asked the doctor after the first shock was, Doctor, how long do I have to live? Mm. And the doctor asked me, who told you you're going to die? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and within me, I felt, oh, the doctor is simply trying to tell me that to calm me down. Yes. So I didn't take anything he said. My mind was closed to everything. Mm. I just felt that it was almost the end. I was, I was like waiting for the worst. And, um, because where okay. I did. So let, let, let me come to you, uh, Ugona. Uh, what's your own story like? How did you find out? I also noticed a lump on my left breast, and um, I was asked to go remove it, which I did. Although I never knew what knew what cancer, I mean, what lump it was, and uh, I went to the hospital. I had a surgery. I removed the lump, and um, the doctor advised I should go for a histology which I did. So the test came out to show that it was cancerous? Yes. The test came out to be cancerous. So uh, you found that, uh, I wouldn't ask you again how you felt because <laughs> the, the feeling is, is usually similar. So well, you, you got it treated. What was your own treatment? Okay, I did my own treatment in National Hospital and that was in that was last year, then I started June 13th, mm. 2009. So you've completed the treatment? Yes, I have. Okay, and you're very fine. Right? Yeah. Uh, of course, anyone that sees you know that <laughs> you're, you're, you're very okay. Um, uh, Gloria, back to you. Um, you were also treated in Nigeria or outside the country? I was treated in Nigeria, <laughs> National Hospital to be precise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, a, a lot of Nigerians think that cancer treatment can only be done outside, successfully outside the country. You can see two persons who are treated here in Nigeria, and of course, there are so many other persons who are treated and they are fine, but not everyone wants to come to the media to, to talk about it. Yes, uh, we'll soon be taking a break, but that's after, um, I asked you about your assessment of cancer care in Nigeria, generally speaking, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, Gloria, let me hear your take on that. Okay, uh, let me say, um, I'll, I'll talk from personal experience, mm -hmm. then I'll also talk from general experience because, um, I, I look at myself as <laughs> a special and miraculous case because throughout my treatment, there was no strike. Okay. Throughout my treatment, there was no breakdown of machine. So it mm. was like my treatment went seamlessly. Okay. That's, that's, that's fine. Your own treatment also went uh, very well. It right? went very well. 
But during radiotherapy, there was a breakdown. A breakdown of nation? Yes. Okay, got fixed. Yes, uh, yeah, I got fixed and I continued after a week. Okay. Okay, thanks for sharing those insights. Uh, we'll take a break and when we return, I'll continue the conversation. Uh, we'll have another survivor. Uh, Gloria, you stay, you're the president of Nepicine. You stay, we'll ask you more questions around policy issues. Then thank you, Gona, for <laughs> joining us. Uh, we'll have one of your colleagues also come to share a different aspect of the story. So please stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. Keep watching. The burden of cancer in Nigeria is enormous. If you're an average earner in our country, Nigeria, you will actually find it difficult to take care of yourself when you have cancer. Because no matter how much you are earning as an average earner, within a space of three months, you find out that your account will be in the red. When I was going through the treatment, it wasn't easy. I started from my little savings and before you knew what was happening, everything finished. I had to call my brother, my siblings, so they came and then sent me money and that was how I continued. So it is never easy when someone has cancer in Nigeria. And sometimes even when you call relatives, the relatives get tired of helping you. And you don't blame them if they do that because they too, they are managing. I want to plead with the individuals out there, corporate societies and organizations, please lend support to cancer patients. No, it's so difficult, it's so expensive to treat cancer both within and outside Nigeria. In fact, it's even more expensive to treat cancer outside Nigeria than within Nigeria. But even as cheap as it is here, we still cannot afford it. So I am pleading with all corporate organizations, individuals, philanthropists, why not channel your resources and help people? People that you know that at the end of the day, they may not pay you back, but God will only be the one to reward you. Please, if you do more, it's going to go a long way. The issue of uh, cancer in Nigeria is quite enormous and taxing, especially in terms of uh, the financial implication. Uh, and also the uh, infrastructure, med uh, medical-wise, uh, going through this treatment is a, is, a, is, a, is a huge journey. And I find that within the cost, the financial cost is within 10.5 million to treat a cancer patient for a period of one year. And uh, the drugs that we, she took was Herceptin and Dositacel. Uh, which was quite huge and taxing even for me as a caregiver. Uh, but I was fortunate that my organization came in to take uh, a huge part of the financial burden. However, the issue of radiotherapy is also another uh, Herculean tax we encountered during the journey. Uh, we have to travel out to Nairobi to get this treatment and the cost of, uh, at the cost of uh, 3.5 million. So you find out that it's quite challenging to a lot of people and a lot of homes that if there is no financial support or intervention from either voluntary organizations, NGOs or CBOs, uh, such patients could likely uh, not go through it as time is also of essence in the treatment of this disease. We call on organizations to really support because of this uh, uh, treatment, especially in Nigeria, where uh, insurance does not cover most of the drugs. Uh, we believe that with your kind support uh, from various uh, uh, organizations, individuals and uh, uh, well-meaning people in the country, we'll be able to eradicate this disease.
Welcome back to Talk Here with Dr. Lars, uh, your favorite health program on television. I've been speaking with uh, cancer survivors who uh, advocate in the cancer space and they've organized themselves as network of people impacted by cancer in Nigeria and it is seen. Uh, good to be back, uh, Gloria. Thank we you. We wish to continue to you. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of Nigerians will really be interested in hearing every aspect of your stories, but the time never seemed to be enough. And we also have uh, Chinere Oku, uh, who is also a cancer survivor. And she's joining us uh, on this program to share a very interesting aspect of her own story. Let me start with you, Chinere. Um, when we were talking off camera, you mentioned about your experience going to for herbal treatment after your diagnosis and uh, how that didn't quite work out. Can you quickly summarize that aspect of your experience? Okay, so um, in 2017, I found out I, I had cancer. Mm -hmm. So I went for mastectomy. Mastectomy is removal of the Yeah, arm. yeah. No, of the breast. The breast, okay. yeah. So I had the single mastectomy and after that the doctors advised that I do chemotherapy and radiotherapy. But I didn't want to do it. Like firstly I wasn't working at the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how I was going to put this in. And then I had so many stories of people dying from chemotherapy. So I cancelled that option and um, I just went on living my life and in 2018 I had a recurrence and when I had that recurrence, I, my aunt who was also battling with cancer at the mm. time had gone for herbal treatment somewhere in Joss so she suggested I should follow her and she looked like she was doing well so I was encouraged. I followed her to the place and I felt my treatment. Yeah, so they did the surgery for me. Right there at the Harvard place? Yeah. They do surgery at, at the Harvard place? Yes, as they well. do. Yes. They do. Sounds interesting. Yeah, you'll be surprised. They do. <laughs> After surgery, then they give you all kinds of herbs. They apply on the wound, which is usually left open, cover the plaster, keep putting it, and then you take, you drink some. So you got better after the Harvard treatment? No, I continued with them for two months. And then um, my aunt died from yeah, the yeah, cancer had spread. And when she died, they had to make up for it for me. I realized I had been playing with my life. So I quickly went back to the hospital and told them I was going to do the therapy. So they asked me for the lump I did. I told them we didn't get it. But we used my other half diagnosis and, 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 com and continue the treatment. Yeah. So you're done with the treatment? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. That's, uh, as you can see, a lot of things happen in our health system. And this calls for those who are regulating the health sector to look out for, the, I, I don't see any business, uh, people in the harbor place doing surgeries. Who gave the license to do those surgeries? Well, uh, perhaps in the course of the program, in subsequent weeks, we speak with those, uh, in authorities to kind, uh, you know, possibly provide answers to that. Yes, uh, Gloria is a new vista uh, in the policy space. There's been a lot of talk ongoing. Uh, mm -hmm. There's been a lot of advocacy to provide support for cancer patients. You know, I'm going to ask you, based on your experience with your team, how, is there hope? Because out of pocket expenditure in Nigeria is over 70%. So cancer patients have the burden of treating themselves. Has there been any progress made in terms of the authorities from any level, providing support for care for people who are impacted by cancer in Nigeria? Well, there is. And mm -hmm. um, I, I want to say there is hope. Three years ago, there was no hope. Mm -hmm. But as we speak, there is hope. And that's because as we speak, cancer has been included, not all aspects of it anyway, has been included into NHIS. So, but unfortunately, those that are under NHIS are just like 5% of the whole population. They're yeah, actually less so, than 1%. Yeah, uh, so that's what they have on record. They said 5%. We, we, so, we've been ask, actually asking for the number, <laughs> how many Nigerians are covered, <laughs> but we keep hearing percentages. They Maybe tell us they 5%. The so let's go okay. with what is on record. Yeah. And um, since it covers surgery, covers part of the chemotherapy, but a lot of tests are still uncovered, which are 
we are still asking for that. We are happy with the progress that has been made because at least the ones that are on insurance can at least meet halfway. Get some support. Yes, they so can what get Do you know about support. this talk about a catastrophic health fund? And what's, what do you know about it? I'm happy to say that we as a patient uh, advocates and also the Health Federation of Nigeria, we paid a lot of um, cost services to the National Assembly so that they can set out a certain amount, which a fund that is basically for cancer treatment for indigent patients in mm -hmm. so and um to god be the glory this year in 2020 um budgets 720 million was mapped out we actually asked for 5 billion okay but 720 million was, was mapped out it's not enough but it is something yes and uh, i've learned to be grateful to whatever effort that is made yes, because when we start from there i know we are going to improve and we are you know the president some weeks ago uh, presented the budget so yes. hopefully uh much more amounts you know because yes. health sector generally appear to have, have gotten more funds shift. yes, yes. Uh, Chinere, um what are you well what would be your advice or recommendations to other persons who are going through cancer. You know, uh, people bring up all kinds of supplements and use it to deceive uh, people who are fighting cancer. They bring all sorts of herbs. They bring, you know, just different kind of stories. And you can't really blame the patients because they just need solution. They just need to get better. Mm -hmm. So what would be your advice to anybody who is watching you that may be in a similar situation? Okay, I, I'll give the advice from what I did, what I think I did right. But um, I think people should learn how to talk to others. There's a lot of hush-hush about this cancer thing. There's a lot of stigma. Some people even stigmatize themselves, even before others stigmatize them. Mm. And they don't want to talk about it. So some people see me and they're like, oh, people survive cancer. <sighs> some of them have survivors to their family. They don't even know. So people keep hiding. Mm. So when you talk to somebody who has gone through this journey, the person is likely to guide you. Yes. And I always tell people to, it's not a time for you to feel guilty, to feel ashamed, to feel like the world has come. So in other words, people should yes. do the right things do and right also... Thing and do you your know, treatments. Don't be scared of the side effects. And it can be done well in Nigeria. You had yours in Nigeria too. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Okay, uh, we are con constrained by time, you know, but that's the much we can take today. We wish the conversation, but on social media, please ask questions uh you know we'll be ready to respond and you can also follow them and uh, get more insights and information so thank you gloria oji uh chinyere oku and uh, ugona who had you know stepped out before the break thank you really so much for making our time to to be on this program and sharing your experience with other nigerians so thank you as well for watching my name is dr Lars eze let the conversation continue on social media. But note, cancer can be treated in Nigeria. Cancer can be cured in Nigeria. But the key is early detection and prompt and effective treatment. Bye for now. Same station, same time next week. Keep watching, talking here with Dr. Laz.